If you have ongoing exposure to controlling people, it's a virtual certainty that you're going to experience blurry boundaries, which is why I have created the extensive online course called This Is Me, Establishing Boundaries with the Controllers in Your Life. There's a link below that will give you all of the details, and I hope that you would find it therapeutic. There are a couple of things about narcissists that we can say right up front with a great deal of certainty. First and foremost, we're just going to say these individuals bring lots of unresolved issues uh, with them when they engage with you, whether it's their own, uh, own dysregulated emotion or a history of broken relationship. There's lots there that they're struggling with and they have. But a second thing we can say about them is that they desperately don't want to admit the extent of those unresolved issues. They, they just can't go into that space. And that's where they turn the focus on to you. That's why you exist. If they can have you uh, to be the one who carries all of the pain that they don't want to look at on the inside of themselves, then somehow or another that becomes a victory. It's so important for you to realize that a narcissist begins any relationship with a shield of defensiveness already in place. Now, that's so important for you to know because whenever there's a strain or stress between you and that narcissist, they're going to simply say, well, you're the problem. But in fact, if it were someone else beside you, they would be doing the exact same thing with them. Now, uh, before you say anything significant, before you do anything that would be plus or minus with them, uh, they already are posturing with you. They're already thinking, how can I make myself look good? And, and actually, how can I make myself look better than what I really am? And that being the case, they have a, a large number of defense mechanisms that they utilize. Uh, they'll go into a lot of justification and rationalization and blame shifting. And uh, they use what I call boomerang communication. Me, what about you? That, that kind of thing. But one of the most favorite uh, defense mechanisms that narcissists use is what we refer to as projection. They have all this junk on the inside of themselves and they're thinking, I don't want to have to admit any of this. And so what they do in projection is they see the junk in you that they refuse to admit within themselves. Uh, think of being in a movie theater when you have the projector back here and the picture is over here. The projection says, shows that they're going to see something over there that actually originates over here. That's where we get the term projection. Now, let's keep in mind that narcissists are constantly trying to find an edge of superiority. Uh, and they, they have an attitude of entitlement. And so basically what they're going to say is, I absolutely refuse to admit my flaws, but wow, you have a whole lot of flaws that you're just not coming to terms with. And what they do is they bring an attitude of judgment they can't simply describe. And there's a bit of a difference between descriptive thinking and judgmental thinking. Healthy people will describe what's going on. I had a bad episode here, or I was struggling with that, or I felt insecure, or I was curious about this, or that was a bad uh, calculation, and they describe it. Narcissists will take it much further, and they put a harsh, harsh judgment on it. They've been on the receiving end of judgments their entire lives, and so they've decided if they can pronounce judgment, then that means somehow or another they're on the top end of the equation. Now, there are multiple ways that you can determine if an, uh, a narcissist is using projection onto you. Let me run through uh, four or five of them here with you. Uh, first and foremost, uh, narcissists will project by attacking and belittling you. Uh, for example, they may say, you are so, you know, fill in the blank, you're so critical. You know, they've got a problem themselves with being critical, but no, you're the one who's critical or you're so sneaky, or you're so dishonest, or you're so untrustworthy. And so they see in you what they don't want to look at uh, within themselves, and they'll just pound that into you. Lots of belittlement and lots of harsh rhetoric uh, coming in your direction about how defective you are. Now, right along with that, another uh, uh, attitude of, or angle of projection that they use is they, they offer guilt trips toward you. Uh, for example, they may uh, say something to the effect of, I can't believe 
that you would stoop so low to be this way or that you would have done something like this or, wow, uh, I used to think you were a nice person, but boy, have I learned differently about that. Your character is so deceptive or you're so, uh, you're just not the person I thought you were going to be. And they just want to put shame and guilt on you in that harsh kind of way. And of course, that's some of the shame and guilt that they carry on the inside of themselves. They don't want to say, you know, I have some moments where my character's not good, or I have some moments where I have uh, done some things that I'm not proud of. It's like, no, let's just keep the focus on you. The more guilt I can shovel onto you, then the less we have to worry about with that uh, topic within myself. Now, another thing that they do that's part of their projection, and this is probably the, the biggest one that they use, and that is they'll play the victim card. And when I say that they'll play the victim card, I mean constantly. Look what a raw deal I've gotten from you. Or uh, I can't believe that I have to put up with all the stuff that you throw my way. I mean, my life was really good until, you know, you showed up in it. Or I can't believe that I have to put up with your misery. Or uh, after all I've done for you, this is the, this is the thanks that I get. And so they play that victim card real huge. It's like, you know, I'm this terrific person, but life has just given me a raw deal. Now, again, if you're a narcissist, you're operating with a lot of self-absorption and uh, superiority and manipulation and control and entitlement. And somehow or another, uh, you come along and think, well, but I'm a victim. Now, look how great I am. And if something doesn't happen right, wow, I didn't get what I deserved. And that's very much an, an, uh, an offshoot of the entitlement that they carry on the inside of in its own uh, backwards kind of way. Now, another thing that they'll tend to do that's part of their projection, seeing in you what they don't want to deal with on the inside of themselves, is they'll say, you owe me an apology. Uh, <laughs> you know, when, when there's a difficulty between you and me, somebody needs to come clean. That's you. <laughs> and and rather than saying, you know, we had a disagreement or we had a disappointment or we had a, a miscalculation between the two of us, let me admit my, uh, my side of the equation. And, and then I'd like for you to do the same. And we can have this sense of give and take and fairness. That is something that is so lost on a narcissist. And frankly, a lot of people have difficulty with that. But we can just put things out there and say, let's talk about how we can move forward. Narcissist is like, nope, you're in my debt. What are you going to do to apologize to me and make it good? And then another thing that they tend to do as part of their projection, and they use this um, uh, the technique of what we call triangulation. Now, when we talk about triangulation, you'll have a couple of other people that might be in your world. And so the narcissist can go over there and say, hey, did you know about this person over here? Whew some real serious problems. And then they'll go to the other person and say, well, the word on the street is this person over here is saying this. And so they, they play one person off of another. Uh, and you know who's going to come out looking good, at least in their estimation? Me, the narcissist. Uh, I'm over here thinking, yeah, well, I, I saw it all. And I've tried to warn you, uh, but you know, it, it fell apart anyway. And so they triangulate you against other individuals. Uh, we have a terminology for that uh, games people play, let you and him fight. Uh, that's what they like to do. And so this is all a part of their uh, carrying a lot of their own unresolved issues, but then refusing to acknowledge it. They just want to keep putting it onto you. They see in you what they refuse to acknowledge within themselves. So as you recognize this, let, let's understand that there are some uh, internal and then also external adjustments that you can make so that you don't get completely pulled under by this. Um, first and foremost, when you begin seeing that you are dealing with this projecting narcissist, uh, you want to have a real strong objective understanding about who you are. And I hope you have somebody in your world uh, that can be honest with you about what they see that's pluses and minuses, and you can be honest with yourself. You know, I have this, this, and this that's part of my strength. I have this, that, and the other uh, that I need to work on. And, and and when the narcissist comes along and they start pounding away at you, it's like, no, nah, I've already thought this thing through. I'm willing to hear uh, input from somebody that really wants to work with me. But I'm hoping you can have a sense of objectivity rather than this game-playing manipulation that the narcissist wants to pull you into. Another thing that I'm hoping you can do as you uh, try to uh, figure out how to manage the uh, projecting narcissist is... Learn to read behind the scenes uh, with their anger. 
uh, when the, it, anger is t attached to your sense of self-preservation, you're wishing to stand up for what you believe is wisest and best and what your needs are, that's, that's all fine and good. Narcissists come on so strong with their anger. It's like they're, they're giving way too much emphasis on you owe me. And, and, and it's all about entitlement and it's all about making commands, uh, doing a command performance. And in other words, uh, in order for them to be taken seriously, well, if they want, they figure out, well, if I turn up the volume, then maybe you'll take me seriously. Uh, their anger, uh, illustrates there's a deep insecurity that's coming at, uh, coming from them and they can't sit down and talk reasonably with you. Now, beyond that, once you uh, see what you're up against, You'll need to learn how to give what we just refer to as gray rock bland responses. Uh, you might say when that person comes at you with all their projections, we think differently. Okay, that's enough. Or I'm not taking responsibility for that. Or I understand that's your perspective. And, and, and you don't want to get into an argument or a debate because you never will win when you're uh, engaging with that person. Keep in mind, they're very outward focused. They don't introspect. And then finally, uh, we're going to say boundaries, boundaries, boundaries. Uh, in your mind, you're, I'm hoping you can say, you know, despite what you feel, here's my game plan. And then you follow through on what you know is wisest and best with priorities and beliefs and opinions. Stick with who you are. Narcissists spend their entire lives constructing a false self, a false front and blame shifting and all the projection that goes along with it is just part of their game. So I'm hoping that you have decided to, over here on Team Healthy, we want to be uh, honest about who we are and we want to be honest about who other people are. And we, I'm hoping that as you engage with that narcissist, you can determine, I'd like to build an authentic relationship with you, but in the event that you prove incapable of doing that, I'm moving forward with what I know to be wisest and best. And if it means that I have to do it away from you, that's where I'm headed. Now, obviously, uh, uh, when you have issues like this that you're dealing with, there can be times when you think, you know, I need somebody to help me out with this. And so uh, you know that one of the things that I do is I, I encourage you to seek therapy where you are. And if uh, if you would prefer, we have a, a, a team of, of licensed professionals. There's a link below that can take you to online therapy and you can select somebody that can uh, unpack this with you. Uh, these individuals, narcissists, can be very twisted in the way that they try to make you feel. And so if you have somebody uh, that can objectively help you sift it out, I would strongly encourage you to seek that out. Obviously, I'd encourage you to subscribe to our network so that uh, we can uh, have more videos coming your way. So uh, please do so, so that uh, we can be a part of your journey with you on an ongoing basis. Also, I've put together courses. And uh, these courses are about, uh, called This Is Me. Uh, it's about uh, setting boundaries in your life, free to be, finding yourself despite the controllers. They're very extensive, multiple videos and teaching points and uh, questions. Also, we have my books and other resources. Just know narcissists carry a lot of junk about who they are and, uh, you know, the old junk in the trunk kind of mentality. And, and they're going to want to put their junk onto you. And I'm hoping you can see through it and, and determine I'm going to be a healthy person. I'd like for you to be a healthy person with me, but in the event that you don't, uh, I'm going to live with steadiness and decency because I'm committed to being a person of peace.